Hello again, and welcome to My Bolt UV. I'm Jim, and we're going from point A to point B. Climb in. Let's go. This episode is entitled The Limitations. I'm going to discuss the limitations of the Bolt UV and give you my opinion. These are just my thoughts. I'm not posting this to be argumentative, just posting the information for your edification. There are three limitations that I'm going to talk about today. The most talked about limitation is DC fast charge. I will go into some detail on that. The second limitation is the size of the car. It's a compact, it's small, but it's plenty comfortable for four adults. And finally, the top speed of the car is 92 or 93 miles per hour, depending on who you talk to, and some consider this a limitation. But if you're on the hi a highway here in the United States, you better be keeping it under the speed limit anyway. Let's get into the issue of DC fast charge. First of all, you should not be using DC fast charge every day. Fast charging will shorten the lifespan of your battery. If you want to know more about your Bolt battery performance, then I suggest you take the time to set up an account with Recurrent Auto. They will educate you on the battery performance and give you tips and tricks that I don't have time to cover in this video. Secondly, if you're road tripping your Bolt, I would suggest you never let the car drop below 30% and only charge it to about 80-85%. There are three benefits to doing it this way. One, your time on station will be less than an hour in all cases. Two, you will keep your battery in the sweet range and the sweet range is between 30 and 80 percent. And three, you won't become as fatigued while you're driving because you'll be taking breaks about every hour and a half or so. If you charge at home the day before you leave, it's okay to fully charge to 100 percent for your first leg. Whatever you do, try to keep the charge above 20 percent for your entire trip. I'm going to talk a little bit about tapering here, and these are my experiences at EVGO and Electrify American stations. EVGO held off their tapering better than Electrify America. At the EVGO sites that I used, I always started at between 20 and 35 percent. It quickly ramped up to about 52 to 53 kilowatt hours. It would hold there until the state of charge reached about 65 percent, and then it would begin to taper off to about 45 kilowatt hours but by the time it reached 68% of charge, and then it would hold there until it reached about 75% of charge, where it slowly tapered off to about 30 kilowatt hours, and then I would unplug. The Electrify America stations would taper off a little faster at the 60% state of charge to about 42 kilowatt hours, and then at 75% state of charge, it would taper off to about 25 kilowatt hours. All in all, I would be at the EVGO station for about 45 minutes to get the charge I needed, and the Electrify America stations for about 55 minutes. I know that there's going to be someone who chimes in here with a comment saying that tapering is all based on the commands from the car. While that is true to an extent, the various charging companies can override those settings with their own curves to min minimize their chances of damaging a vehicle. Remember, we're in a litigious society. It's all about litigation. There are people that don't sue you for about anything and if your car happens to have a little, little bit less performance because you DC fast charged at the wrong station and you think it damaged your battery you can believe somebody's going to sue that fast charge manufacturer and or provider. Needless to say I'm going to give you two rules of thumb for road trip charging. On the first charge of the day charge to 100% if you can do that on a level 2 charger before you leave that's better on the battery. Level 2 charging is better on the battery. The second rule of thumb for traveling is never, ever, ever let your battery deplete to less than 10%. That's just not healthy for your battery. It takes about 20 minutes to ramp up to 50 kilowatt hours when you do this. So be careful in letting your battery get too drained.
Now to quote Dr. McCoy off of Star Trek. Dang it, Jim, it's a compact car. Enough said. I'm going to leave it at that. Let's talk just a little bit about the top speed of the car. The speed is limited, not by the battery or by the tires, as some have stated, but by the drive motor and the gearbox. It is operating at about 85 to 90 percent of capacity at 92 or 93 miles per hour. It would technically be capable of about 108 to 110 miles per hour, but when you hit that 100 percent maximum usage on the bearings, you're looking at destroying them real quick. Engineers do not like to operate things like drive motors and gearboxes at 100% capacity. It reduces the overall life of such components. Limiting the car to 93 miles per hour means you can drive it at that speed without worrying about destroying any of the components in the car. I'm sure there's someone out there who will find a hack to get around this limitation if they haven't done it already. I would be interested in hearing the outcome of the longevity of such a hack. If you really want to know more about the speed limiting things that go on underneath the hood, I would suggest that you subscribe to John Kelly's YouTube channel at Weber State University. He has some very detailed videos about the breakdown of the bolt. And if you want to know more about that, I'm going to provide a link in the, the description below the video. So you can go there and, and follow that link for more information. I'm already working on the next episode. In that episode, I'll be going through the driver information menu system on the info screen that's right in front of the driver. And then I'll talk about the larger infotainment screen. If you'd have something else you'd like for me to cover in a future video, just leave a comment and I will do my best to get that to that sooner rather than later. Remember to subscribe, share, comment, and like. And if you want to know when I upload a new video, hit the notification bell. Remember, treat everyone with kindness, put a smile on your face, help someone when you have the opportunity, pay it forward when someone helps you, and I'll be here next week. See you then.